16 more tips and tricks that you probably did not know existed on your iPhone. Now, some of these tricks are going to be brand new, but some of them are also just more underrated or just underused features within iOS. Also, this video is sponsored by Skillshare, and the first 500 people to click the link in the description below get two months of premium for free. We'll talk more about Skillshare later in this video. All right, so let's not waste any more time. Let's go and get straight into these tips and tricks. And the first one has to do with taking screenshots. So we all take screenshots, but did you know that if you take a screenshot, screenshot and you tap and hold on the preview, you actually get the share sheet that pulls up. And from here, you could very easily send it as a message. You can text it to somebody. You can send it in an email. You can save it to your files. You can airdrop it really quickly, all without having to actually go into this and then, you know, go into the share sheet or press done save it to your photos and then go into your photos and then do the action from there. So from here, again, all you do is take a screenshot tap and hold and you get all those actions right away because most of the time when you're taking a screenshot, the main reason for taking the screenshot is to either send it to somebody or to post it somewhere. So just a very handy trick here to save you some time. The next trick is a quick and easy way to send your location to somebody via text message. And all you have to do is type in I'm at and then space and you'll see right here in the autocorrect section right here, it says current location. If you go ahead and click on that, it will automatically send your current location to that person. And obviously sending your location via text is going to be very useful for so many different scenarios, but you can see right here, just last weekend, somebody sent their current location right here because we parked at Universal Studios, a theme park, and we wanted to remember where we parked the car. So all we had to do is type in I'm at, and then just tap on current location right there, and it will automatically pin your current location so we can remember where we parked in the theme park. So that is a very handy and quick way to send your location to somebody via text. The next trick is in Apple Music. And in Apple Music, if you go to your library right here, if you can go to a playlist or anything, all you have to do is 3D touch on anything right here. So say we wanna do Hate My Guts, by 3D touch on that, you'll see there's an option here called Create station. If you go ahead and click on that, it will actually create a station of songs that are similar to the song you just 3D touched on and created a station for. And, you know, obviously this is nothing new. You can do this in Spotify and things as well, but a lot of people don't know you can do this in Apple Music. And the thing about it that makes it so great is the stations are actually really, really good. Apple's algorithms for finding music that's very similar to the one that you 3D touched on and created the station for, the songs are actually really good. So I highly recommend if you have Apple Music to utilize this feature. The next trick is an easy way to see your forward and back history inside of Safari. So for instance, if we go on to ESPN right here, let's just click around a little bit. Let's just go on to multiple different things just so we have a little bit of history built up. Let's go and click right here as well. And now if you click on the back arrow, back and hold, you can see this is our history of the things we just clicked on. If we go back and when the forward arrow is there, let's go back again. If we tap and hold on forward, you can see this is the history of within this tab of the history going forward. So this can be very handy in a lot of different scenarios, but especially if, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but if you get an ad and basically you can't go back, you'll just sit there and keep pressing on back, but it'll keep reloading that ad. If you tap and hold and go back to that page, that's how you can actually get out of that ad. Of course, it's really handy for just going back to pages you just were at as well. Now, speaking of Safari tips and tricks, the next one also occurs within Safari. So if we go into our tabs right here and go all the way up to the top, you'll notice that there's actually a search tabs option right here. And if you have a lot of tabs open all the time, like I do, this can be really handy for finding a tab of, you know, whatever website you're looking for inside of all of those different pages you have open. So let's just go ahead and search for something like, uh, we'll just search Dillard's. So you can see I searched Dillard's and there are three tabs that match that query for or Dillard's. And if we tap and hold on the cancel button up here in the top right, you'll see that I can close all three of the tabs matching that query that we just put up right there, Dillard's. So that is really handy. Not only can you search what tabs you have open with a certain keyword, but you can also tap and hold the cancel button to close all of those tabs matching that query. And then just some bonus tips for Safari. If you tap and hold on the refresh button right there, you can see you can request the desktop website and you can also reload without content blockers if you have those installed. And if you tap and hold on the tab button in the bottom right you can close all tabs you can open a new private tab or a new tab or you can close this tab very easily if you tap and hold on bookmarks this is also a very quick and easy way to add a bookmark and the final thing i want to show you guys inside of safari is the autocomplete so if we start typing right here you'll notice that we have these arrows on the right and if we actually click on those arrows say we want to search for something in safari so safari and then it'll come up with more things that are autocomplete that are more popular you know things that people are searching for so safari wilderness 
keep tapping those safari wilderness promo code you can basically see you can just auto complete until you get to what you want and then you can search so maybe if i wanted to search mlb schedule i can start typing mlb and space and maybe it's not there but if i start typing sc you can see schedule is right there and then we can go ahead and tap and search very easily so that is one way to save time when google searching inside of safari now the next trick is one that's going to be really awesome for those of you who listen to your audio out loud on your outward facing speakers on your iphone and this is going to be a way to make your speakers louder actually louder and the way we do this is inside of settings we go to settings music eq and the one that makes your speakers louder is called late night so i'm going to let you guys hear it without an eq and then i'm going to turn the late night eq on so you can see the difference So hopefully you guys can hear that there is a difference in the audio as far as how loud it gets. It is definitely louder when you have the EQ set to late night right here. Now, before we continue, let's take a minute to talk about today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. So Skillshare is an online learning community for anyone who wants to learn how to do something or just how to perfect what they already know. With more than 25,000 classes in iOS app development, web development, design, music production, and more, you are definitely bound to find classes that you will genuinely be interested in. And whether you just wanna make some money by freelancing, if you wanna prepare for a career, or even just to have the knowledge of how to do things, a premium membership is definitely the way to go if you want to master a skill. Premium is going to get you unlimited access to all classes on the site for less than $10 a month. That's like one meal from Chick-fil-A. People have always asked me how I learned to do certain things in my life, and I always say that I'm self-taught, which is partly true, but I also learn from sites like Skillshare. And this is especially true for a class I just recently finished up called iOS App Development for Complete and Utter Beginners. Surprisingly enough, and some people know this, but I never learned how to develop iOS apps but after taking this course just recently, I have at least some clue about iOS app development. Now, of course, I'm not a pro yet. I won't have an app in the app store or anything just yet, but there are other classes that I'll be taking that are more geared towards experienced developers. So I can say that now I'm at least somewhat of an experienced developer so I can move on to some of the more advanced classes. So if you're interested in joining the more than 7 million creators learning how to create awesome stuff with Skillshare, sign up using the link in the description to get two months for free. And again, this is kind of a limited offer because only the first 500 people that click the link down in the description below get those two free months so do not procrastinate go ahead and click on that link and get started with skillshare today all right so let's get back to these tips and tricks so did you guys know that you can see your warranty status and your apple care status straight from your ios device all you have to do is go into settings general about and you'll see if you're updated to iOS 12.2, you will see you have a new section here called limited warranty. And if you do have Apple Care, you will also get a section for Apple Care. If you click on that, it shows the estimated expiration date for your warranty. And again, it will be the same for Apple Care. So that is pretty cool and very handy. So you don't have to go online and log in to see when your coverage ends. So if you guys have a lot of folders and you always see the notification badge up there that shows you have notifications, but you don't want to sit there and scroll through all of the folders or all the applications inside the folder to see which applications have the notifications you could just simply 3d touch on the folder and you will get the application with notifications showing right there you can simply tap on it and it will open up that application so that is a very handy tip for those of you who use a lot of folders on your device now did you guys know that you can tell siri how to properly pronounce your name if she says it wrong let me show you what i'm talking about siri what's my name that's not how you pronounce my name Brandone. And then you can see here, once you tell her that she pronounced it wrong, there will be multiple different pronunciations for your specific name. So it's really cool that you could do that even for basic names like Brandon. But if you have a more unique name, this will really come in handy for you. The next trick is inside of the Safari video player. So if you're playing a video inside of Safari, you know that you have the two 15 second forward and 15 second back buttons. And all this does is simply go back 15 seconds or forward 15 seconds. But if you tap and hold on either one, it will actually scrub and go for just one second or two seconds instead of going forward a full 15 seconds so as you can see when i tap and hold it only goes forward about one second and then it picks up eventually if you keep on holding it so that is really handy again if you don't want to go forward or backwards a full 15 seconds and it's the same within the music application as well so if you play a song you can tap and hold on the next button 
to fast forward or scrub through, you know, just a few seconds. You can see it there fast forwarding just a little bit. You could tap and hold on the forward and the backwards to just scrub very precisely. Now, if you're big on adding events to your calendar, you're going to like this next trick here. So if you go and tap and add a new event. So you guys will know that if you're creating an event inside of calendar, you're only going to have the option to go every five minutes. So 505, 510, 515, and so on. But actually, if you double tap right here, you can see that it switches and it changes to every single minute now. So this is really handy if you want to get a very precise time inside of your calendar event and you don't want to just have to rely on every five minutes. But of course, if you double tap again, it will take you back to every five minutes so you guys know that if you tap and hold on certain keys it gives you like different ways you know to type it out right there like different languages and things like that but did you know that if you go ahead to the zero and tap and hold on the zero that is a quick and easy way to get the degree sign and I don't know if you guys did this as well but I would always have to go to Google and just copy the degree sign when I wanted to post it on social media or something like that I didn't know you could actually get to it straight from the keyboard and of course you could do it for the money sign as well so if you wanted to get a different currencies money sign you could do it by just tapping and holding on the money sign if you tap and hold on the quotations right here you can see you could get different quote marks like different uh, directions you also get these right here so pretty cool little tips there for the keyboard and iOS now speaking of keyboard tricks you guys know that you can tap and hold on the space bar to use that as a trackpad and basically go in between letters really easily and very precisely and if you have a 3d touch compatible device you can go ahead and tap and hold anywhere on the keyboard to go ahead and activate the trackpad but did you know on a 3d touch device if you you tap and hold and then press in a little bit harder it will actually select all of the text right there so let me show you that again so if I 3d touch I can go in between but if I put more pressure down with my thumb right here you can see that it selects all of the text so that is a very quick and easy way to select text if you do have a 3d touch compatible device now speaking of 3d touch did you know that if you 3d touch on the find my iPhone application it will actually show you the devices that you can quickly ping without having to go into the application and ping those devices and you can see below it it does say play a sound I even have it for my airpods too right there and then all that's gonna happen when we click that is it's gonna play the pinging noise so we can try to find our device inside our house or wherever it's at and the final tip is going to be very handy if you find yourself always lowering your brightness on your device to save battery and this trick is going to allow you to lower the brightness to below zero below the lowest that Apple allows you to reduce the brightness to so I'm going to go ahead and lower my brightness all the way and you can see right there maybe you can maybe you can't on the screen but you can barely see the screen and I'm gonna turn it up while I set this setting real quick so all you have to do is go into settings general accessibility display accommodations reduce white point and then set reduce white point to 100% and now if we lower our brightness you can see I myself in person can really see nothing on the screen right now it's below zero below the minimum brightness allowed by Apple so this can be really handy if you're trying to save battery and you want to get the lowest brightness possible if you don't want to turn your device off or anything like that this is the way to do it now let me try to figure out if I can even turn my brightness up I can't even see anything on the screen there we go so you can see that's halfway it is a little bit dangerous if you don't know where everything is on your device but let me go ahead and turn that off but that is a very nice way to save some battery if you really really need it if you're really in a pinch so anyways guys there you have it those are 16 tips and tricks that you probably didn't know existed on your iphone on iOS.